All right, so this is Earth and Water. Uh, Jason is drinking what's left of his wife. Um, if you don't recall, she was juiced. Juiced herself, suicide. Um, very sad. Um, God, it's almost like I can still hear her laughing, even now. <laughs> ah, it's like she's right here. Gasping, snorting. So charming. How is Jory anyway? She, she tastes good? I don't know, I'm kind of nervous. I'm guessing it's kind of like pee. You're juicing yourself, I mean. Is that... Ah! Go on. Is that what she normally tastes like? Pee? No. Okay. She um, went to the toilet, though. I guess that's true. Yeah. So, in loving memory, we'll put a little memorial thing right there. But anyway, yeah. uh, this is Earth and Water. Um, and you notice that morning you were just doing there after... You know, someone close to you is gone. We got some of that in this episode. <laughs> so that made me very happy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Morning. Yes. Um, You're a cruel, cruel man. <laughs> okay, so actually, I really got to think. Uh, kind of a lot happened in this episode. I'm trying to think, like, where exactly it started. I, I know Finn was, as we said, in mourning that, you know, he, uh, uh, he couldn't be with Flame Princess. And... Um, so, so Bubblegum comes across Flame Princess, who is, like... Comes across? It, oh, well, Flame Princess comes across her, I guess. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, uh, because she's uh, analyzing her, making sure she doesn't explode, pretty much, and destroy the kingdom. Uh, and she says that... Bubblegum says she can pretty much, like, suppress her emotions, was mm -hmm. that sort of it? So that, you know, no flame or anything could uh, happen there. It's pretty much a reverse frozen. Um, you know, instead of fire, it's it's cold or whatever. Um, and they're about to do that, and then Bubblegum, just in the most obvious... Just obvious joke you can see coming, just goes to Cinnamon Bun, it's like, can you write down these numbers? Can you not open that door? And I was so hoping another joke was gonna happen, but it's just... He does the opposite, of course, and lets her go and they hang out at, uh, uh, at his place. Um, while Finn and Jake are fighting a legion of Gunters and their Snoa Constrictors. <laughs> really funny. Um, and, uh, again, great, great little cameo by the Ice King. I'm really digging sort of these Ice King cameos. Ice Kingios, I don't know. So now, why did Gunter, why is Gunter able because to... Because he has them? the crown, which I why? like. Uh, Ice King took it off to rebuild the place that, uh, it, pretty much his kingdom because Flame Princess eradicated. That's great continuity. I really love that they kept up with that. And so he's crashing and living at Finn's place, like, brushing his teeth, and Finn kind of has it coming. <laughs> so it works out okay. Um, and then we get a flashback Showing, uh, literally from birth, Flame Princess's history, uh, she was given birth to, and this guy comes, says that the word is, ba 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 no. Um, oh, you stole Bree's joke. Okay, everybody was thinking that No, when, that's no, only God, Bree. Oh, all right, all right. Sorry, Bree. Um... When, uh, but, but says that her powers are gonna be even greater than the Flame King, so he's just like, get rid of her! Uh, so... The guy, or the messenger, tries to get rid of her, and uh, kind of can't do it, or or does he? He gives it to the one guy who can hold her. And well, then... he was gonna, he was gonna like basically let her walk off a cliff, and he couldn't do it, so he That's found right. someone to give her to, and he's like, oh, 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 yeah, away. and then she starts just, she's a baby, so she just starts blowing stuff up, um, and uh, Bubblegum comes, sort of picks her up in this flame suit. Tells the Flame King, hey, keep her under control. This is not cool. Come on, be something of a parent. So that's well, why he... What are you talking about? I didn't lose anything. <laughs> I love that look uh, Bubblegum gives to the little... Yeah. Like, that was just great. It was so strange. I, I love it. Um, so, uh, so he puts her in that big lantern thing. So now we know the origin of that. Uh, Flame Princess is really pissed off and says, I'm going to go and, and change things. So she goes to the Fire Kingdom and... Pretty much just takes it over, now puts the father in the lamp, the, uh, whatever that is. And, uh, if Finn and Bubblegum find her and they come in, she's wearing a kick-ass suit. <laughs> whatever that was, that just looked awesome. Yeah. Um, and now she's the ruler of the Flame Kingdom, and they pretty much make up, and she says, you know, everyone has to be honest here. I mean, like, everything has to be totally 100% honest. Can you be totally 100% honest with me? And he goes, hmm, and... That's about it. Um, 
I don't know what to make of them at the end. I don't know if that's like a joke or if that's going to lead to something else. But uh, yeah, we definitely have kind of like I was saying before, you know, accounting for sort of the, you know, the lack of mourning or the lack of sadness that we didn't see in the episode before, which I'm glad they did address. I'm glad they got to that. It wasn't like he just met up with her. It's like, hey, let's go study again. You know, it's like you show him feeling really bad. So it's at least it got in. Like I said, I think the order was a little backwards, but... Well, I love the fact that he's like, so we're cool, right? And she's like, yeah. He's like, so we're dating again? She's like, no. Oh, does she actually say no? I, I thought... Yeah, she said no. I thought she said, if you can be totally honest. Wasn't no, that no, no, no. Oh, okay, I missed that they can, he, as He can come and hang out with her as long as he's totally honest. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I missed that part. I thought they said they were back together. No, all right, all right. no, no, no. Sorry, I was too blown away by Cinnamon Bun's stupidity. Uh, oh, speaking of grading characters from Lemon Grab to Cinnamon Bun, you know what I was hoping? You know what I was hoping when she says, now, can you just do this one thing and mark these letters, to, and mark these numbers down and not open that door? I was hoping he would just do it and be a total surprise. Like, yeah. he just follows through with it, but then when you see the door open up, it's like, everyone saw that coming, and it's, yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm getting kind of sick of that character, kind of like what what you said. Um, I just, my, no, my favorite reaction to that character, honestly, again, is Bree. In what was it like two episodes ago when uh, Marceline takes uh. Bubblegum away and just Simon Bun comes out, and just goes I and Bree just goes, God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> that just really cracked me up because <laughs> it's kind of summing up my feeling towards that character. It's just so dumb. Um, but I don't, if you like him. I get it. I it drives me nuts. Um, <laughs> but, uh, okay, so the, the scene very much like a... It may be a little too crowded the more I'm thinking about it, because I'm thinking, like, God, this start off with Finn feeling bad, and then the Ice King, and then Flame Princess, and then Bubblegum comes in, and then I guess to take the powers away, and then she gets you know, with him and Bun, and then they're going to the Flame Kingdom, then we get her background, or background first, and then she's taking over the Flame Kingdom, it's like... God, a lot, friggin' lot happens in this episode. Yeah. Um, and I guess they're not going together now. Uh, kind of sad. I like them as a couple. I, I hope they keep trying. Or I hope they work out something with that. Um, but uh, it, it was still fun. I like seeing some things, you know, kind of wrapped up there. Um, anything with that Fire Kingdom I love. I love... <laughs> even the messenger looked great. The friggin' messenger was a great design. Uh... <laughs> Keith David as the Fire King is still hilarious. Um, I th people kind of forget he can he can do comedy pretty well because he yeah. was the father in uh, There's Something About Mary, and he, he he's uh, you've never seen that. I saw it years ago. Oh, well, he was the he was the is it the beans of the Frank? You know he, he's that guy. Uh, in the very opening, he's uh, Cameron Diaz's uh, father in it, and it's hilarious. I mean he's so funny, and people forget. That he can do comedy really well, and I think because he does have that very deep, kind of menacing voice, it sounds so much funnier when he's like, you know, I'm gonna ground you for reals! You know, I mean, it just sounds so funny. Um, Wait. Cameron Diaz's dad. In There's Something About Mary. Okay, now hold on. This is Keith David, right? Yes. Cameron Diaz's father was black? In the movie, yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, see, I don't remember that. Yeah, no. And That's why I'm like, trying to think. I'm like, is there a different Keith David that I'm getting this wrong? No, but no, okay. he's, he is hilarious, <laughs> like hugely funny, and I, I think he's one of the best things in it. Um, I'll have to rewatch. No, yeah. I won't. It, it, it's worth it just for, like, okay, it doesn't fully hold up, but it's worth it just for him, because he's, he's just hilarious. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I like to find, um, like I said, it wrapped up a few things. I... I want to see them as a couple, I want to, but maybe not as much as I want to see her rule the kingdom, because that seemed kind of cool, huh? um, and, and that can be kind of fun. <laughs> um, and I, what I'd like to see, I'd like to see the honesty thing start to backtrack, like having every single person be honest starts to work against them and start, you know, because there's some things that should be kept a secret, some things that shouldn't be said. Kind of like they're sitting there and it's like, oh, I'm just on edge because, you know, I'm secretly dating his sister. Yeah, and then the guard's just like, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, and that was hugely funny. Um, mm -hmm. Those guards were hugely funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Something about guards and security men is, like, they, they really write them very well. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing that, like, maybe fall through or something. But, yeah, no, sir, having her rule the kingdom, like, that's kind of fun. I think that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts? I liked it. Um, I like that Finn got the beatdown of his life, in a sense. 
Um, this entire episode, he is consistently reminded how he screwed things up with <laughs> That's Flame true, Princess. With, with Ice King and... <laughs> Ice King, uh, Flame Princess, Peebles. Everyone's just kind of reminding him how much he screwed up. And I think that's something that Finn needs. He needs to know that, yeah, he screwed up. It's his fault. No one else's fault. It's his fault. Mm. And uh, I liked that. I mean, I like Finn. Finn's probably my favorite character, honestly. But sometimes you just need to hear the honest-to-God truth. And, yeah, I, I liked that. Um, I did love when Jake hid behind the cushion. <gasps> An intruder! <laughs> a burglar! A burglar, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. I like how he's getting confused, like, what a boy's hangout is. Like, you know, we can we can do each other's nails and tell straight. Nah, that's not a boy's night out. Oh, we can go shopping and get new hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I... My problem with Cinnamon Bun, and it's a lot of shows, is that mentally retarded characters... If, uh, if that is what he is, I mean, it's... Well, I, he's I'm babes. getting that... I, <laughs> That's what, is that what they said? People said I, I he, he's that. definitely big. I, 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 I sort of wonder if that's the... I was kind of getting that vibe, too. Uh, I was wondering right if they were going that direction. Um, but there's too many characters where they're just overly stupid, and they make the stupidest mistakes, and it's like, yes, it's people's fault for consistently putting Cinnamon Bun in these places of power or control or whatever she's dumb for letting him do this but at the same time that doesn't excuse him of what he's done and it's like i can't stand them putting the dumb character in these situations just so he can screw things up but in the end he's actually the good guy because look he's watching out for flame princess and now he's got his own doggy it's like yeah but he broke the rules well i was gonna say what I mean, they tried to give him a little bit of a connection with Flame Princess, which, honestly, my first thought is, please don't. I don't want to see more of this character. I'm just sick of him. But <laughs> on the other hand, if they don't, I mean, hell, I think you can still make the argument. I mean, if they are going for, you know, there's something, you know, mentally off about him or something like that, uh, it's, like, hugely disrespectful and mean-spirited. Yeah. <laughs> because all they're doing, like you said, they're just having him come in and screw things up. And well, back in the beginning, one thing I loved was Cinnamon Bun was there, and he was kind of like happy-go-lucky, a little bit nutty, a little uh, bit half-witted, like with the uh, the tarts. Mm. And he was like, oh, sure, I'll go. Do, 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 do. And it was kind of like a little bit more genuine and cute and nice. It felt loving. Yeah. Now it's just kind of like, oh, look at the freaking moron who's yeah, going to screw everything up. It feels very mean. I mean, even yeah. though, like I said, they do have this heartfelt kind of heartfelt thing where, you know, her and him kind of connect, which I'm not against. I'm actually not against, you know, her connecting with someone who is so simple that it's like he almost can't lie because he just d doesn't know much else. Yeah. You know, it's like all he knows is the truth and what's told to him. Um, so there's a part of me that kind of respects that, but yeah, I'm kind of with you. It's most of the time he's only there to screw things up, and it seems like it's written out of this very, you know, we're trying to be more funny, you know, so we can be, we're trying to be mean to be funny, not, you know, like, hey, isn't this a likable character, you know, isn't it kind of fun when he screws up because he's so likable, it's like, no, it's just, it's just mistake upon mistake and not much character, and so you just really start to dislike him. Yeah. And I feel like we don't get to know him that well, or, like you said, early on, it was just kind of a fun, like you said, just everything was kind of happy and go lucky, and it's like, you know, oh, cool, like, if you told me he had something, you know, mentally not all there, it's like, that's fine, because, you know, he's still likable, and he's still fun, and, you know, and he, it's like, I, I win my hand with this guy, because he's, you know, just so, it's so much fun, but, yeah, then he just gets so stupid, and, and so not catching on to anything, and only put in there just to screw things up. I mean, there was also one time, uh, the Tree Trunks and Mr. Pig, where they fell in love and all that stuff. There's other episodes, like, it seems like Cinnamon Bun is there to fill the void for any character they kind of need at the time. This one, they needed a kind of a dumb, moronic character, Cinnamon Bun. There's the one, uh, Tree Trunks and Mr. Pig, where they're making out at the concert, and people says, like, Cinnamon Bun, it's over, tell everyone to go home. And Cinnamon Bun is kind of an ass. Mm -hmm. He's kind of, like, just, like... Everyone leave! Get out now! It's like, okay, they need someone to be loud and obnoxious. Well, he's simple, it's okay, he can yeah. be loud and obnoxious. But at the same time, no, he's kind of a jerk. Hmm. Like, he's kind of there to fill the void for any 
emotion they need. Some loving character, sure. A dopey character, sure. An angry character, sure. So that you don't get much of a character. Yeah. You know, and it's I'd just sort of whatever emotion is needed for the moment. And I'd love to actually hear and see Cinnamon, Cinnamon Bun's past. That would be kind of neat to see. <laughs> I'd be curious where he came from and how he got to where he is. But at the same time, it's just kind of like, eh. I don't know if I want to really invest that much time. I was going to say, I don't want to put up with him through it. You know, unless yeah. they... I would like if they bring back, or we use it, more of the very lighthearted, fun, you know, enjoyable, uh, where we liked being around him, and not, oh, he's just going to screw things up. Yeah. Okay, okay. Like, it's okay for the character to make mistakes and screw a few things up, and it's like, that's all he's become. Yeah. You know, he's he's a nuisance. That's what he's being written. He's always being written as a nuisance, except for, you know, a little bit when he's talking to Flame Princess. Even then, that's by accident. Yeah. You know, that sort of seems like. Uh, so... They needed someone that the Flame Princess could talk to, that they could actually... She will, When she went back to the Flame Kingdom, now she has a companion that she can talk to. Most of the other cast, they couldn't really just simplistically say, oh, let's get rid of that person or let's move them to mm. this kingdom because Peppermint Butler or whatnot. It would just be really weird. Cinnamon Bun, it kind of works. We can actually remove him and it'll be okay. Everything will still flow like clockwork, but if we need him, we can always kind of bring him back. Yeah, and like I said, I'm not against them having a connection, especially with him being so simple. Yeah. It, it's the more, like you said, that he's written more as a nuisance than, you know, than, than a character. character. Yeah. yeah. Um, the one other thing that I'll sort of, I, it never really dawned on me until I was watching this episode, uh, and I'm not against it, but I'm just noticing more and more, it's like, wow, this is like a really common thing, and maybe it's a trope, maybe, I'm sure they've listed it somewhere, uh, is that... A lot of um, a lot of stories where some usually I'm trying to think of any occurrence where there there is a male, but where there's a female that has like some sort of power, they can you know blow something up or do whatever. It's almost always linked to the emotions. Yeah. You know, I, I'm thinking of this it, when I brought up Frozen before. That's something she can do when she gets angry or you know, very emotional. The whatever she turns things into snow, whatever. Oh. Um, I try to think, friggin' the, the Princess Peach game, that's what she fights with. She fights with, like, her emotions and crying and stuff like that. And it's one of those things where I'm thinking to myself, you know, like, it's it, it's fine if someone wants to, like, I like the idea of the emotions being connected to the person. You know, Akira sort of worked that way, too, uh, which I thought was really cool. But I'm Akira? thinking... Akira? You never saw Akira? Which Akira? No, Akira, the, the anime. No, I know, but there was no character that was alive in the movie Akira. Are you thinking Tetsuo? No, in, yeah, in the movie Akira. That's okay, my, okay. Uh, t t Tetsuo. Maybe I said that wrong. Sorry. Yes. Tetsuo. Okay. Kaneda. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No. I'm, okay. You, you know the movie. <laughs> oh yeah. Because you said that, I'm like, but Akira's not really in the movie. Only briefly. It's Tetsuo who. Yeah. No. T all Tetsuo. All bonkers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. But I was trying to think. It's like outside of that, it's like I, I haven't really seen that that much, and it's like it's not a bad idea because it's like it's you know. It, Everything, the drama is about emotions, and comedy is about emotions and everything, so having a visual representation literally be crazy and huge, you know, it's like, that's fine, but it seems to always be, you know, like, a, a, either a girl or a young woman, you know, who's going through, like, adolescence or something, or, or, or going through, you know, growing up, and it's like, you know, it, it, calm down your emotions, calm down your emotions, and I'm always like, I'm just starting to get tired of this trope. I think I'm just seeing it one too many times. Um, which like I say, it's worked fine, you know, for the most part. You know, like I said, it, I, I love Flame Princess. Now you want to see adolescent boys go through it? Well, we we kind of have with, you know, with Tetsuo and stuff, but it, 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 no, it's not even that. It's just more that it's like, you know, yes, it seems to be more with women, but it's like, whatever. It's more just the trope in general of seeing these, you know, the emotions fuel the whatever. It's like, I'm just starting to get a little tired of it, you know. It's like, it, it worked great, but... Let's move on to something else, you know. I, I, I think I'm finally starting to get a little tired. Um, but, you know, it's it's fine, just as long as we, like, stop when we know. It's like, okay, we've done this to death. Let's let's move on. Um, it's never going to happen, dude. <laughs> probably Ever. Not. Um, well, I think... Do you watch Dragon Ball Z? Yeah. Do they do the same thing? Like, are their powers connected to their motion? Every time they scream, something explodes. Well, so it's... I just sort of made the assumption... It's, I mean, yes and no. You can argue that, yes, it is definitely connected to their emotions, 
Goku went Super Saiyan for the first time upon the death of his friend. But, I mean, that's kind of different than just getting pissed off. Uh -huh. His friend died right in front of him, so he flips the, you know, hell out. I, I mean, yes and no. Honestly, it okay. depends who you talk to, honestly. I mean, it's like I said, it, it makes sense, because there's nothing that looks cooler than a character yelling, ah, in some sort of visual representation of, like, an explosion, or things turning sharp, or everything freezing, you know, some sort of cool, awesome Well, power. normally when they're going, oh, it's they're building up their power. They're mm -hmm. not actually pissed. I mean, well, yeah, that could be... They're it. just going, oh, and they're just kind of building up their power. That's it. Well, I think that's why so many, you know, like, this trope is catching on, because it's like, well, now, whenever they do that, something cool will happen. It's yeah. not just they have to be angry or, like, somebody has to die or something, you know, and they have to react. It's whenever they're angry, we can have something cool happen. Yeah. You know, that creates drama, because the more, you know, angry or upset they get, the more stuff will get crazy, and that makes things more dramatic, blah, blah, blah. Um, like, like I said, I'm just, I, I'm just starting to get a little bored by it, but... Read the old X-Men comics. I love the old X-Men comics. Um... You won't have any of that in there. Well, uh, no, everyone just has powers, because they're just fucking awesome, they're mutants. Huh? So, can't wait for Apocalypse. No! Yes! No! Okay, the only reason to get through X-Men no. Days of Future Past is to get to Apocalypse. Why? Because I want to see Apocalypse! Why not, why not a different villain? Uh, I'd be fine with Sinister. Really? But... Mr. Sinister? Yes, I love Mr. Sinister! He's back? No! Okay. He's... I no. haven't heard of Mr. Sinister since the Inferno Saga. Uh, yeah, but he was cool! He had the cool... He had the, the, the white and the black and the weird spidery thing. He, he, he was cool. That or Apocalypse. I'm cool with you. <sighs> okay, only if Apocalypse takes Angel and... Okay, having not seen Days of Future Past... Was Angel in it? No. Ah, oh, dumb! See, the only way I want to see Apocalypse is if he's actually making the Four Horsemen, and he takes Angel and turns him into Archangel. He, he, he was in three. They could bring him back. There's a couple mutants they didn't have back. Yeah. I'm Angel! I'm in the movie! Bye! Made more of an appearance than the Rhino. 